After months of waiting, we finally got NFL football. We'll debrief about all the crazy stuff that happened in week one on DraftKings, and we'll get you ready with our cash and GPP lineup on DraftKings scoring coming up next. Hi, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Kurtzman, and we are the Fantasy Football Consultants. And Eric, boy, was this a really nice week. Not only did we see countless upsets, just like the Jacksonville Jaguars defeating the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. That was Survivor. But I'm amazing. You want to talk about upsets, Michael. What happened in San Francisco? I think Eric I don't want to talk about it. (laughs) Let's talk a little bit about DraftKings, Michael. Um... Tell us a little bit about our week one DraftKings lineup. We learned that Miles Sanders was uh, not going to play, so we made that uh, late change, and which you guys always need to pay attention to late-breaking news to make sure your lineup is optimized. Yeah, and for the studs and duds of last week, let's uh, get the bad news out of the way because we got to hype up the good news. Uh, the duds were Austin Eckler, one of our late-game switches. Uh, another one was Boston Scott, who was Miles Sanders' replacement, who didn't do so hot. And another one was Hayden Hurst, though he wasn't so much as the others since he was relatively cheap. Well, both Hurst and Boston Scott was really cheap. So even though I would classify him as a disappointment, it didn't really hurt our overall lineup that much because we were able to allocate that cost to other guys. And all of those other guys pretty much smashed, except for Austin Eckler. Look, Michael, there was a decision between Josh Jacobs and Austin Eckler, and we made the wrong one. Uh, But the shocking part of it is, on DraftKings, full PPR, we went with Eckler because we expected the one thing that's for sure is he would get involved in the passing game, and he barely got involved in the passing game at all against the Cincinnati Bengal defense that was not good last year. I think that we saw a little bit of the Philip Rivers uh, effect, that Philip Rivers loves dropping, uh, checking down, and doing dump-off passes to his running back. And that isn't something that Tyra Taylor does as much. And I think Eckler is going to be hurt by it, where I think the Indianapolis Colts uh, running backs actually will be helped by that. So yeah. let's give us some good news, because overall well, – it was a lot of good news. Yeah, well, the good news was astounding good news. Mitchell Trubisky had a good game. For- Remember how I said last week how we're trying to save money and go for that low-cost defense so we can allocate that money towards Devontae Adams? Well, that move paid off because Washington delivered. They scored 15 points as a defense for $2,000. That's a steal. The, the defense is all so volatile. It's very hard to predict. But to give yourself the best odds is pick a defense that's attacking. Washington last year uh, by far had the most number of sacks of any of the defenses any around that price range. And that's why we opted for them. And uh, they really came up big against a Philadelphia team that was hurting on offense without their number one running back, Miles Sanders. Yeah, definitely. And uh, for the third stud, it was our very own Devontae Adams, whom by lowering down the defense cost, we were able to afford. So it was like a win-win. Devontae Adams completely balled out, scoring over 45 points. Yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, our contest. We're going to do it for the first 10 weeks of the season, the top four finishes on our challenge question of the week. So for week two, what is our challenge question of the week, Michael? Pick the top DraftKings player, wide receiver only, on the main slate. You guys have to remember that. It's only the wide receivers on the main slate. But we're going to pick – you have to pick someone who's sub $7,000. So the DraftKings price has to be less than $7,000. Pick the highest – your first choice. And then in case there is a tiebreaker – Pick your second highest. If there's a third tiebreaker, it's going to be whoever puts it into the YouTube comments first. So get in your picks uh, as soon as possible. Let's get into the main course, Michael. Week two, DraftKings, we're going to put together a cash 
and a GPP lineup? Uh, well, for building our cash lineups, we'd like to start with the running back position, the position that has the most value compared to every other position. And for running back number one, we went with the big boy, Derrick Henry. Now, I, we really like Derrick Henry for the couple reasons of he gets just so many carries a game. Like last week, he got over 100 yards, but he ran the ball 31 times and even caught three passes. Like he touched the ball 34 times. That's, that's massive. That, that's incredible. I mean, I don't know what's more incredible for Henry. The 31 rushes are the three, uh, the three catches because, look, he only caught one uh, ball a game. If this is a new leap at all, that he's going to catch three a game, we're going to love that. Like if he gets involved in the passing game like that, that just makes his value rise up tremendously. And his implied total is 26.5, which is actually pretty good. And Tennessee last year was the most proficient running team in the NFL. Derrick Henry led the league in rushing yards and touchdowns. So by picking him, you are solidifying yourself at running back one. He just ticks off all the boxes, Michael. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a big home favorite running back. Game script will be in his favor. And, folks, did you guys watch the Colt Jacksonville game last week? How many times did Phillip Rivers drop off, dump off short passes uh, to his running back and watch that running back rumble for 10, 11, 12 yards? Uh, I, I can't believe the Titans won't do that if, uh, with Henry a few times. I love this game. I know some of you are like, but Christian McCaffrey, look, I like his matchup far more than Christian McCaffrey. And I also like the over $2,000 that we say. Yeah. And on another thing is Christian McCaffrey's going against the best run defense in the NFL last year. Tampa Bay was the number one run defense in the NFL last year, and they haven't really lost anyone. So I have no reason to believe that they're not number one. Well, for the same reason, Michael, that we like Derrick Henry, we like this next guy. Just, a, just everything's a little bit less condensed. And the guy that I'm talking about is Jonathan Taylor. So one thing that's condensed about Jonathan Taylor is, look how far I get to scroll down. At only $5,700. So I'm saving $2,200 off uh, Derrick Henry. But he has a lot of the same things. He is at home. He is favored, uh, granted by less, but he's favored. And he pegs as a defense that got absolutely torched last week by the Green Bay Packers. Now, if you're on another planet and you weren't paying attention to football, you might go, Eric, what about Marlon Mack? Well, Marlon Mack, uh, unfortunately, terrible injury. Achilles heel, he is out for the rest of the season. And head coach Frank Reich has already said, Taylor will step into a starting role. So he's gonna be the starting back. Look, Naeem Hines is gonna be involved. He is gonna be involved, uh, especially as the third down back. But look, look at last week, Jonathan Taylor got involved in the passing game when Hines was still uh, obviously competing with him Six catches for 67 yards. We love that. And he'll be the, uh, the primary ball carrier, and he should get the goal line carries. All that for only $5,700. I feel like I'm selling a used car here, Michael. I love Jonathan Taylor this week. Yeah, and you have every right to. I mean, he, the value is just, it's there. And considering how much Phillip Rivers, like you said, dumps off the ball, to the running backs, I mean, Jonathan Taylor is going to touch the ball a lot, and that is going to help him. All right. So we've got uh, two great running backs. Let's move on to wide receiver. Michael, where would you like to go? And boy, oh, boy, we are going with the twice in a row. We're picking him twice, Devontae Adams. You can't pass up on the guy. I mean – you saw what he did to Minnesota defense, and that's a genuinely good defense. And now yeah. he's versing Detroit, who last year was worst, 32nd in the league against the pass. That was with Darius Slay. And now they 
don't have Darius Slay, so it still puts him 32nd. There's no shutdown corner to guard Devontae Adams. He should have a tremendous field day. His implied total is 28, which is pretty high, and he had 14 catches last week, which is tied for the highest in the league with Devonta, with uh, DeAndre Hopkins, and 17 targets, which is the most in the league. Like, those are outstanding numbers, and that was against a pretty, pretty good defense. That's all I can say about what uh, Devontae Adams did. Um, we can't expect that each week, but the bottom line is we know he's a target hog in a great uh, situation. So we're dialing up Devontae Adams at $8,100. Let me get this straight, Michael. I think I am up with the next pick. You are spending all the money. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You just uh, spent a lot of money with Henry and Adams. So I got to pick somebody with a little bit of a bargain, uh, but I, who I think is sensational. And um, I'll give you a little hint. Let's pick a Dallas Cowboy. Um, and I'm going to go with uh, Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup at a very reasonably priced $5,600. If you guys remember last year, on a per-game basis, because Michael Gallup missed two games, he was right there uh, slightly ahead of Amari Cooper in total targets and just behind him in receptions per game. Got to understand some. Amari Cooper, very up and down all his career. He was really up in week one. Doesn't mean he's going to be up in week two. Here's the other thing to remember. Blake Jarwin injured himself. He's out for the year. So I think all of the Cowboy wide receivers will benefit from that just a little bit. I think more um, targets will be going the way of Gallup, C.D. Williams, and Amari Cooper in an, an outstanding matchup over under 50 points. Michael, this is going to be a shootout. Our final wide receiver, we've got to save some money. So I have to make up for the spending ways that you have, uh, you have done so far in this. And uh, my guy is uh, Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson is the clear number two wide receiver on Pittsburgh. And he had a great rookie campaign. And just listen to what he said with the two quarterbacks he had to deal with with Ben Roethlisberger out. You two clowns, listen to me very, very carefully. You have no idea what you're doing. They, those quarterbacks last year had no idea what they're doing. But the good news is Ben Roethlisberger is back, uh, and uh, he is going to be throwing passes to him, so we feel good about that. No issues with him being on the field. He was on the field 86% of the snaps in week one. So um, love the targets. He got 10 targets. I'm all in on Deontay Johnson at a ridiculously low price of 4000 $500. Watch the news. He's listed as questionable, but um, for now, he's in our lineup. What we say in our NFL DFS masterclass is paying up on a quarterback is a luxury, not a necessity. If we had that luxury, there is nothing wrong with Lamar Jackson this week. Yeah. He's, he's facing, has a huge implied total, facing a Houston defense who uh, just got torched last week by uh, Mahomes. I think Jackson's going to have a good game. But where would you like to go, given we don't have enough money for Jackson? I would like to go with the man responsible or partially responsible for defeating my Niners. I will never forgive him. But for this week, he can join our squad. Oh, my God. Why am I doing this? Kyler Murray. What do you like about Kyler? Um, he's kind, he's kind of like Lamar Jackson. He's a dual threat quarterback. He can run. He can throw. And he now has DeAndre Hopkins to throw to. And Hopkins had 16 targets last game. That's very, very nice. And he versed a Niners defense last game. That is top, that's a top five defense in the NFL. Maybe not with the injuries, but like when they're healthy, that's a top five defense. And he, he, he beat them on his own. And so I think now that he's versing a Washington defense, things are a lot easier for him, and he should have a better game than he did um, – Last game, and he's a top five consensus quarterback, and you can get him outside of the top ten price range. Well, that, 
like that just screams a steal. Love this uh, pick, Michael. Going up against Washington. Remember, Washington has a very good defensive line, but they're weaker in the secondary. So that's where they can potentially be uh, exposed. So I'm super excited that Kyler Murray is only six thousand one hundred dollars. Uh, we're snapping him up. Uh, we're going to pay down at tight end. I am really surprised that um, Logan Thomas is this cheap on, uh, on DraftKings this week. I tell you, I don't have no respect. No respect at all. Logan Thomas is only $3,600. So um, usually DraftKings will catch up on the fact that, gee, I want you guys to think a little bit. Who does Washington have as weapons in the passing game other than Terry McLaurin? Scary Terry. <laughs> it's, it's Logan Thomas really looks like he's going to be the net number two option. Vernon Davis is gone. Jordan Reed is gone. The, the number one tight end is Logan Thomas. And he was used last week. Eight targets. You cannot argue with eight targets when you're paying down at only $3,600. Um, he caught four of them. If he can repeat that, um, especially the touchdown that he got, they always, he's always a threat around the end zone. And as a final cherry on the, on the, on the top of the Sunday, how about the fact that he's going against Arizona, who was legendarily bad last week, last year, excuse me, against tight ends. So for only $3,600, Logan Thomas is going to be our guy. Yeah, and for his price, you, you can't go wrong. You just can't. Yeah, so um, we're going to take a peek at the flex position. So normally what we like to do is, if necessary, pay down on defense. So I'm going to force you, Michael, to pay down on defense. <laughs> now I get to spend a little bit of money in the flex position. And I like Allen Robinson here. He's in the top five in targets last year of all wide receivers. He collected 154 targets. And I expect Trubisky is going to continue to be the starter. He has an absolute rapport with uh, Mitchell Trubisky. And he draws a New York Giant defense that can easily be exposed by uh, the Chicago passing attack. In fact, when Robinson went against Detroit last, sorry, went against the Giants last year, what did he do? All he did was catch six passes for 131 yards. Um, love this pick of Allen Robinson in our flex. Yeah, definitely. But I have no money. Like, Yep, you've got... You've got $2,100. You can, there are four different defenses, Michael. I was so kind to you. I let you, you have four different defenses you can select. Um, who are you going with? Uh, well, contrary to maybe popular belief, I don't know, we are going to go with the New York Jets defense for $2,000. Now this ties into what I said last week. We don't feel that it's necessary to pay up for a defense. And we specifically got the New York Jets so we could pay up for other players that we think will make a much more significant value than paying up for a defense. Almost, it's, it's almost never the case that you want to pay up for a defense. And, and I know it pains me to say this, but San Francisco is kind of beat up. They're a pretty – they hit they caught the injury bug. And New York – the Jets at their price get a good amount of sacks for their price. And that's the number one thing we look at for defenses is can they get to the quarterback and force mistakes? And I think the Jets for $2,000 is a great value pick to be able to do that. Yeah. And we also really like the fact that the Jets are home. They're facing a Niner team that has to fly cross country. Um, so it, we, we, we really hope, and once again, given that defense is very volatile, uh, that we can have a Jet team that just doesn't embarrass us by having them in our lineup. 
Switching gears now to our GPP lineup, where it is crucial to get a high scoring stack to maximize the amount of points that you can get. And this stack is a perfect example of that with a 50 over under. Yeah, I really like it. I've talked about Amari Cooper already, but the guy has huge games, a good about four or five every, uh, every year. And let's just hope that this is one of them. And so I got Dak Prescott to Amari Cooper and then running back with Calvin Ridley, who, you know, Michael, in Atlanta, Calvin Ridley looks like the wide receiver that has the biggest upside in getting touchdowns. And um, love yeah. that opportunity with, with Ridley here. And so we're really attacking this Atlanta-Dallas game. Yeah. Those of us who have been following fantasy for a couple of years know that Julio Jones just doesn't get touchdowns. It's weird. He just he, – he maybe gets six touchdowns a year. He gets all these yards and then no touchdowns. And Calvin Ridley seems like the guy that will potentially clean up, which is what you're looking for in GPP. Yeah. And if Atlanta gets down, and I think there's a good chance that they do, they have no problem throwing the ball all over the field. But why did we decide to go with Kenyon Drake and Ronald Jones? Yeah. How about the fact that we've got two running backs – who are at home, two running backs who are favored by a lot. And so we think the game script is going to be really good where they both have the ability to really go off. Now, Kenyon Drake is facing a very tough Washington line, which is why we would never have him in our cash game. But look, if the game script works out that Arizona takes a big lead in this, we know from – from last year, Kenyon Drake has had some really big games. So we're hoping for that. And in relation to Ronald Jones, look, he's facing Carolina. How did Josh Jacobs do last week against Carolina? I oh, mean, Josh Jacobs killed them, and that's a mediocre Oakland team. And Josh Jacobs just killed them. And I really like that we can get both of these guys sub 6,000, given their great matchup and given the fact that that they are the clear guy on their team. Now, I will put one caveat with Ronald Jones is Leonard Fournette's on the team. Ronald Jones was one that got 19 touches. Um, so the question, though, is will Leonard Fournette, after having another week on the team, play a bigger role? It's a chance we're taking, but that's exactly what you do in GPP, take chances. Oh, yeah, definitely. Speaking of chances, Will Fuller. Now, Will Fuller, if you guys saw his week one, he's clearly the number one. He racked up, and in North, he racked up 10 targets on eight receptions. Stacking that up against the other Houston receivers, it wasn't, it wasn't close. He's the clear number one, and he is a deep threat. And when deep threats go off, they really go off. Absolutely. So I think we're taking the chance, just like GPP is all about. If he goes off, he will go off. And that's what GPP is all about, taking that big risk. It's all about air yards uh, when it comes to, to wide receivers. And quite honestly, Ridley, Cooper, and Fuller give us uh, air yards. In GPP is always about correlation. We talked about the obvious correlation of a quarterback and its wide receiver and the opposing wide receiver. But another correlation is a running back and his defense. If you think the game script is that that team is going to dominate the other team. And I am taking the approach that Arizona is going to wipe out Washington this week. And if you believe that, you love the game script with Arizona really ahead, running the ball with Kenyon Drake, and the defense pinning their ears back against the Washington offense led by Dwayne Haskins. I know that Haskins pulled off the coming, comeback last week against Philadelphia, but I'm going to bet he's not going to be able to do that all the time and uh, can force him into some mistakes. All right, so that will wrap up our GPP uh, lineup. If you made it this part of the video, smash the like button. And if you haven't yet, hit the red subscriber button. Michael and I would like to thank all of the many new subscribers we got over the last week, and also thank those who've been a subscriber from really all the way from the beginning. Yeah, 
you guys are truly one of the best fan bases on YouTube. And touching into another part, if you guys want to get all this up-to-date, amazing knowledge, go ahead and check out Draft Dashboard. If you use our affiliate link, you can get a one-month trial for only $1. That's right. For $1, you can try out Draft Dashboard. And it's not just for football. It's for every sport out there. What Draft Dashboard does is truly help, amazing and helpful, and it really helps us decide who to go with. That link is in the description. The key thing about it is it will greatly reduce your research time. For your chance to win $100 as soon as possible, go down to the comment section and comment, who do you think the top two fantasy scoring wide receivers are on DraftKings under $7,000? And they have to be on the main slate. And please don't forget to put your DraftKings username in the comment section as well. As a reminder, we also cover NFL Survivor Pools, uh, giving our picks for week two. We'll put that video on the screen. As well as when it is available, we'll put our FanDuel week two cash and GGP lineup. Check out that video as well. Well, everybody, it was, we will look forward to seeing you next week. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, see you next time.